welcome uh, to those here. I'm tempted to do this on Nicholas Parsons and welcome our listeners around the world, which we yeah. wonders of World Wide Web. Um, but particularly welcome to anybody who is listening at home uh, without actually being here. Um, I'll do what I normally do and just kick off with a few parish notices um, fairly briefly tonight. Um, a look at the forthcoming visits, first of all. Um, we advertised a programme of walks in the last magazine, um, fearing that they would be very quickly and very heavily booked. Um, they are quite nicely booked, but all but the last one, the fourth one, uh, still has seats. So on the one on this coming Sunday, and the next one, and the third one, there are places still available. So if you are interested, even if you have booked on others, because we were going to ration everybody to one walk, um, if you have booked on one walk and would like to go on another, or if you haven't booked at all and would like to go, as long as you don't book for the fourth one, uh, then uh, if you get in touch with Ellie Cakley, our new visits administrator, uh, she should be able to accommodate you. Um, you'll need to move very quickly, obviously, if you want to join the one on, the, uh, on this coming Sunday. Um, there are also a few places left on the visit, which basically is going to the Fire Fire exhibition um, shortly to close at the Museum of London with a curator's talk to support that, uh, which was very interesting when we did it for the um, crime exhibition uh, a while ago, uh, but preceded by uh, a tour of St Paul's Cathedral. Uh, there are a few places left on that as well, so if you're interested in that, again, if you send an email or a letter to... Uh, Kellen, she'll book you on. Um, the other visits are fully booked, the ones that Mike Kay organises. Um, a very successful visit I gathered to Croydon Tramley yesterday. Uh, Thames Clippers is fully booked. The horse barge visit was fully booked, but Mike tells me he's had four cancellations. Uh, so if you are quick, if you're interested in going on the horse barge trip, they should be uh, uh, an email to Mike Kay in that case, uh, his details are in the magazine, uh, may, if you're quick, secure those for one of those or more of those cancelled bookings. Um, our next meeting here is in a month's time, precisely uh, on the 27th of March. Uh, that's a talk on Crossrail, as I think it still is, Elizabeth Line as it will be, uh, and that will be very quickly followed the following week by the extra meeting we've scheduled, which is Sir Peter Hendy, uh, who's actually agreed to give two talks to the Friends, one next year. Uh, the one this year, on the 3rd of April, uh, will be a retrospective on his fascinating career in the transport industry. Uh, and then next year, he's going to talk, um, as I believe he has to one or two other groups, uh, on IMBA and bus services to Imba specifically. Uh, so two meetings coming up. I'll talk a bit more about the booking for Sir Peter <coughs> next time, but we're gonna to have to manage that fairly uh, tightly because we're expecting a capacity crowd. Right, that's all I need to say by way of introduction, I think, other than to introduce our speaker. Um, many of you will know Roger French. He's, he's managing director of uh, Brighton and Hove Buses before it was Brighton and Hove Buses. Um, so actually has both a pre-privatisation and a post-privatisation experience. Uh, in his more recent retirement, he's become quite a traveller around this country, uh, quite an observant traveller, critical observer, um, and has been looking at the way people organise and publicise public transport in this country, which has informed a number of articles which you may have read in the, uh, in the transport press. Um, but in looking at, what should we say, good and not so good practice, uh, Roger's going to concentrate on the positive tonight, as the title of his talk suggests. So we are going to be treated to 10 ways to increase bus and train passengers. Roger. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much for that introduction, and it really is a privilege to be with you this evening, ladies and gentlemen and friends, um, because the idea of sharing with you my thoughts on how we can get more people traveling by bus and train, I hope will resonate to the extent that you will, uh, when I have concluded, let me have your feedback and your ideas. 
because this project that myself and my friend Ray Stenning are working on toward, is working towards a book that we're hoping to publish later this year, perhaps. And it's work in progress at the moment. So if some of these do resonate, or some of them don't, or you've got other suggestions, pl please let me have them, because it may be there's only seven ways to increase bus and train passengers, and three are nap. Or it may be there's 13 ways, and you can suggest some things that we haven't thought of. Um, also, I, I want to make my own parish notice at the beginning, if I can, and that is to say, uh, I think Barry, I, I say this as a friend, does such a fantastic job for the Friends of uh, London LT Museum. And also, the guy, I don't know if there's anyone here this evening who gets involved in the hidden London tours, but both Ray and I are addicts of them, and we just love them. And for those of you who get involved and, 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 and show us round, thank you very much. It's, it's just a wonderful uh, project to be involved in. The other thing I want to say is that I'm going to speak for about an hour, um, or just less now, because uh, I've already spoken for a few minutes, and, and we've got <laughs> 10 ways to increase passengers, so that means about six minutes per way. Now, I'm passionate about all these ways, and I could actually spend an hour on each, but that would take us through to about four in the morning, and I've got a feeling some of you might not last that. But So if we get to around about, and you're starting to look at your watches about five past seven, and, and I'm only on way number three, start waving your hands a bit, because I've got, I've got carried away, obviously, and I need to get back on track. However, the, the last three or four ways are, are fairly quick. I've got a, it's, one, it's like on the East Coast Main Line. You know, you, you're at Peterborough and you think, we're never going to get King's Cross on time, but it's padded, and, and you suddenly arrive five minutes early. And, and it's similar this evening, okay? So don't worry if you think, oh my God, we're, we're not going to finish this. Now, the 10 ways come, in a way, in three broad categories. Um, and, and it may not surprise you to know my work at Brighton & Hove, what I feel passionate about. And so these aren't ways like saying things like, oh, we've got to run a reliable service and a punctual service, that will get more passengers. That's taken as red. You know, when have you ever gone in a shop to buy a washing machine and you've said, well, is it reliable? You, you assume it's reliable, and we should do the same with running buses and trains. I know there's lots of reasons why trains and buses don't run reliably, but I'm not talking about that this evening. Nor am I talking about things like contactless and technology and all, all this sort of stuff, which, which has finance directors have in apoplexy because it means spending lots of money. These 10 ways are things that you can pretty much do without spending really any money at all. They're just doing things smarter in these sorts of areas of customer service, marketing, and pricing. So, let's begin at the beginning, which is a very good place to start, as Julie Andrews once said, and with number one. Now, this is a bit of an old chestnut, because you're gonna think, well, this is nothing new. We have um, segmented the market by age since time immemorial. Kiddies travel for half fare. Now in London, they, they, they travel free. But let's discuss the young person's market for, for a minute to begin with. Because it, the, <coughs> particularly the bus industry, I'll come to the train sector in, in a while, the bus industry has a peculiar relationship with young people. It's a bit of a love-hate relationship. Now I know if, like me, you've been on a school bus, you happen to have got a bus home in the mid-afternoon and it turns out it pa passes by a school, you, you will also think, what the hell do we want to be encouraging young people to travel by bus for? Because it can be a bit of a nightmare. But on the other hand, let's think positively, young people, I know it's a trite saying, but it is true, they are the customers of the future. If we could invest in young people, get them committed, thinking positively about travelling by bus, there's a good chance that we will keep them, maybe, for the rest of their lives till they get their concessionary bus pass. But what we tend to do as an industry, and I've used the sort of we as though I'm part of the industry, and in a way we all are because we feel passionate about it. In a way, what we tend to do for young people is make, put these obstacles in the way, make it hard for them. Try going on a website of a bus company, assuming you don't know, and say you're 17 years old, 
and work out how much it's going to cost. It's, it's, in, it's very, very difficult to, to see what concessions are around it. It doesn't hit you in the face. Young people are a great market to have because <coughs> they're active, they're mobile, they're out and about. Lifestyles are changing dramatically, as, as we see. The younger generation now have a totally different lifestyle attitude than we did. I'm saying we as a sort of generation above. In, in our day as teenagers, you know, if you wind the clock back um, and think about it, nearly over 45 years ago, the school leaving age went from 14 to 16. And you know, I, uh, in, it was nearly in the early 80s that some bus companies got caught up and stopped charging adult fare age 14. It took quite a while. And do you know the same thing is happening now? A, a young person has to be in some form of education, apprenticeship, vocational training, until they're 18. And yet some bus companies and train companies say, what, you're 16, that's it, mate, full fare. But these kids, these young people, they're not earning any money hardly, and if they are, they're on bottom, this bottom minimum wage for, for young people. Well, why do we do this? Why don't we invest more in encouraging young people to travel by giving them a really good value ticket. Uh, the other thing is, <laughs> yeah, let's speak up for young people, that uh, the, these are critical ages because, not so much these days because lifestyles are changing, but the first thing I wanted to do, even though I was passionate about public transport, but there was a peer group pressure, as soon as you're 17, get your driving lessons organized, get a license. The danger is we're going to lose people completely once they've got into that mode. Now, I know insurance costs have rocketed, and it, it's not, but there's still that idea they've got the alternative excuse in 17. Yet this is the very age a lot of bus companies are charging full whack when the person themselves isn't earning any money. It's just a nonsense. This, this group also is very savvy with technology. You know, in the old days, they wanted an S called Escort. Now they want the latest smartphone. That's the aspirational ownership but they is therefore it's so easy and cheap to communicate with these people you, we can do it like never before through social media and email marketing etc etc can we hardly do any of this uh, uh, as an industry anyway let's cut to the chase my plan is to and by the way that should be 19 to 25 now train industry you shouldn't be charging adult fare age 16 and 17 for the reasons just said. But why don't we make this um, a 16 to 25 bus and rail? Why not? What, what's holding us back? Let's do it so that every young person who buys one of these cards gets a third off uh, in, in the same arrangements as they get with the rail card. That would really impress people. It really would think, well, this is good. More to the point, it would imply that buses and trains are joined up for a change, which we'll come to that a bit more in a minute. So, I know I can see some bus company, I, I know what the FDs are like, I've worked a career in the bus industry, they say, oh, we're going to lose money here. No, you won't. You will generate more trips. Generally speaking, these young people, aside from education, are making trips at marginal times of day, when it doesn't cost in the evenings and, we and at weekends. Why not offer a third off? It would really encourage people to travel. Now, let's go to the, because we're running out of time, let's go to the opposite end of the market. Um, it's a, everyone knows it's free travel now once you're 60. No, it isn't. No, it's not. In fact, from the beginning of the year, and I, I have to declare vested interest here, by the way. <laughs> I spent 31 years at Brighton and Hove, and this year is exactly half my life. So now you know well, well I've got a vested interest. <laughs> it's not going to be half my life when, for next year. It will sort of be less. But uh, yeah, so a lot of us have got to wait now right to us 66, or ne near as damn it. It changes per, per month. So let's think about this for a minute. Until five or six years ago, since 2000 and whenever it was, the Gould, uh, 2008, the Gordon Brown surprised us all with his bribe by saying, right, it's free travel once you're 60. 
Foss companies accepted that and the reimbursement for that. But now there's a whole tranche of people who are ignored. And they have to pay full fare. There's no scheme. There's nothing. But, as I can speak from experience, there's a number of that cohort who maybe have taken early retirement, want to get out and about, got time on their hands, part of the leisure market. We could be stimulated into making more journeys if we were given some sort of discount. But there's nothing, <laughs> absolutely nothing. But bus companies are totally ignoring this market. Totally. <coughs> Now, those of you who live in London, of course, aren't involved in this, but if you're under 60 and you're coming up to 60, there's a time bomb here. And these parts of the country, London, Wales, Merseyside and Scotland, which all offer concessionary fares still at 60, it is unsustainable. Absolutely unsustainable. It cannot carry on. Reason being? Just pure numbers. If you look in the next 10 years, those in the bracket 60 to 64 are going to go from 3.5 million to 4.4 million. Just the demographics. The baby boom is coming up. That's an increase of 25%. Local authorities are already bankrupt virtually, struggling to meet the current concessionary fares reimbursement. There is no way that in Scotland, Wales, Merseyside in particular, as well as London with its, its funding issues, are going to be able to afford this in the next 10 years. Someone's got to get real with the, with the figures in the next two or three years. So the answer, it may not surprise you to know, is that what we need is a senior bus and rail card. So that when someone becomes age 60, they buy their bus and rail, they buy their bus and rail card, and they get a third off their bus travel as well as their train travel. It will encourage ridership, as it does on the railways. More than that, I would say it will be a way out for the politicians that once people get to age 66, the retirement age, and in due course it will be 67, and in due course 68, and who knows, then the local <coughs> authorities, instead of giving free travel, because it is unsustainable, can give this free instead of paying for it 30 quid per year or night or whatever it is 70 quid for a three-year pass they could give one of these instead so that no one who current don't worry anyone who currently gets free travel no one's going to take that away from you no politician will but those who've never enjoyed it won't miss it because we will gradually bring up a different scheme but uh, that, that's more for politicians. I'm just saying commercially to bus companies, look, work together and have a, have a, have a bus and rail card. It will also show joined up this between bus and rail. Now, I know a lot of people in the industry at very senior level, they say this has never happened. You can't do this, all the bureaucracy of it. Wait a minute, well, let's just have a look at this. Who, who? oh, sorry, yeah, I should just add that there's just another statistic, frightening statistic. Look at the number of people <coughs> aged 75 and over. In 2012, they made up 8%, more or less, of the population. In 25 years' time, they're going to double the number of people in that percentage, up to 30, over double, but half as much again, 13% of the population were aged 75. This is why it's unsustainable. So, anyway, as I was saying, it's going to be hard. Yeah, the bureaucracy of it all. Can you imagine sorting out the reimbursement arrangements or sharing this and sharing that? Do you know, our chief executives of our PLC group bus and train companies, they are on two million pound pay packages now, a year. I'm not, I'm not sore, good luck to them. But let them earn this money then. Let's sort out the red tape. Come on, get on with it. Because, and wait a minute, um, who are the main players running buses? Who are the main players running trains? Well, come on. Which brings me to number two. Come on, let's really sort out bus and rail integration. Let's get it sorted once and for all. Um, can you imagine if these guys ran buses and trains that we'd have the situation we currently have of, of Berlin, of, sorry, Moscow, USA type wall separating the two? Amazon, 
I don't use Amazon personally now because I like to promote small bookshop owners, but I used to use Amazon. And any, any time I've logged on after I once bought something, hello, Roger, people who bought this, they also bought that. Why don't you buy this? Why don't, they're forever upselling. Can you imagine if Tesco ran buses and trains? It would be rather like in one of their supermarkets, they, had, they divided it into two. They had all the dry goods and the vegetables in that shop. <laughs> and over here, we've got all the chilled food and the frozen food. <laughs> you want to do a shop in both? No, you can't. You go around your trolley with your dry food and your vegetables, you buy it, you check out, you pay, and you come out that shop, and then you go in the other shop, and you do all your chilled food and your frozen food, you buy and you pay, and you go home. Never the two will meet. This is what it's like travelling by bus and train in this country, even though we've got the same companies running both. All credit to Penrith, York, Cardiff, Reading, and wonderful display, Nottingham foyer there. Do you know, there's only eight stations in the UK that I have found that do this, give bus information out at train stations. There are something like 2,650 stations. Good old Jeff and Vicky, they're going to visit them all, allthestations.co.uk. Check it out. It's a fantastic, is it God or all? Anyway, all the stations, check it out. Wonderful project they're doing this summer. We've only got eight stations. As I, I've, I mean, you may let me know some more later. There's those. Oh, there's the lovely Hebden Bridge. Beautiful station, isn't it? That, that's a bus timetable there. And then there's the wonderful Hull. I mean, this is the actual you know, Rolls-Royce of bus train integration, where you've got buses over there and rail over there. There's the rail timetables. There's the bus timetables. There's the rail. This is all in the same area, and there's the bus. Wonderful. And then there are the buses, and there are the trains. I mean, it's perfect. If only other stations could be like Hull. And then my old stomping ground, Brighton, as was. We had this lovely bus office in the, in the uh, train station. I was so proud of it, giving out information about buses and trains, all integrated. And someone said, well, that yeah, can't carry on. We've got, to, we've got to have a doop doodle or a cards galore. You know, we don't want to be doing bus and train tickets in a train station, for goodness sake. And they moved WH Smith into, the, into the, where we were giving out bus information. That's the name of the game now in train stations, isn't it? So the Brighton ticket office right out the far side there, and I went there the other day, look, I mean, well, there is a box with timetables, so at least it's still there. This is another example of non-joined up working. Aldershot, I don't know if you've ever been to Aldershot, I've been there a few times, there's a little travel office there, there it is. It, it was closed the day I went, because I went on a Tuesday. <laughs> I thought, oh, oh, next time I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come on a Saturday. No, no good. Next time I went, closed on Saturday. It's getting worse. <laughs> but wait a minute. There's the bus terminal. What's that over there? Right by it. It's a Stoke train station. Who runs the buses in order shop? Stagecoach. Yeah. Who runs the trains in order shop? Southwest trains. Who owns Southwest trains? Stagecoach. <laughs> You'd think it wouldn't take a bit of more lateral thinking to put a few bus timetables in there. But no, we can't do that. We might lose the franchise. Well, why, why doesn't the new company do it as well in the interests of public transport? But wait, what's this? This is in York. We've got a bus departure here. This is because pre-beaching days, I think, you can correct me if I'm wrong later, but I think it is, there was, a, there was a train that went to Pickering. And we have carried on showing the departure of the wonderful Yorkshire Coastliner bus that goes up to Pickering, and it's on the departure board. Well, if we can do it in York for historic reasons, and we also do it, I think, in Peterborough for Kings Lynn and Dereham. There are, there are a few oddities that we do. It's just crazy. We do it because of bureaucratic reasons. And then, of course, there's the old favourite. I mean, Amazon would love Plus Bus, wouldn't they? Can you imagine Amazon sort of keeping information about Plus Bus under the counter, which is what happens in train stations? I know it comes up on TVMs now, but I have never, ever, in any of my travels, gone to a railway station and said, return to Guildford, please, or Milton Keynes, or wherever. And they've said, would you like Plus Bus with that, sir? Never. Why not? Because it's a fantastic bargain. Look at this. Manchester. The whole of Greater Manchester for £3.17. Do you know how much the day ticket costs on the bus? £5 off peak. In the peak, £5.60. With a rail card, it's, it's um, 
245 less than half price. What other private industry would not tell their customers about the best bargain around? And yet in the bus and train industry, oh, don't tell people that. Milton Keynes, if you want to spend a day in Milton Keynes, it's a lovely place. <laughs> Look how much it is, 145. Compared to five pounds on the bus, we don't sell this enough, do we? It's just a nonsense. There are some good practices around. Derbyshire got this Wayfarer ticket, if you can find out about it, which is buses and trains all over the county. Then there's this, these things. This is a funny old thing. Um, this is advertised on the first bus website under tickets, other tickets. You scroll down, you find it, and you've got this stylized diagram. As it implies there, it's £10 on a first Great Western Railway or a first bus in that area. You won't find any information about it on the Great Western Railway uh, website. That's all you get about Rangers and Rovers. Now, actually, GWR are quite good. They do do a leaflet about it. Then there's this thing, explore Wales by train and bus. You can go all over Wales by train and bus. Try finding out about it. Oh, it's so difficult. Now, this is a funny one. Until a year ago, you could go around Cornwall for the day on buses and trains for 10 quid. But if you only wanted to go on buses, it would cost 12 quid. <laughs> <laughs> and when you get on the bus and ask the driver for a day ticket, they'll sell you a 12 quid one. But you could say, well, can I have a 10 quid one? It's just crazy. Now, I wrote about this in one of my columns in the trade magazine, and within a week, they put the price up to 30 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't have mentioned it. I should have kept quiet. <laughs> but you, you, yes, I know. I'm not gonna, this, is, this is just between us any more of the things this evening. Here, here's, the, here's the advertising online for it. You go in the barrels of the network of the National Rail website, and that's the marketing for it. I mean, it's just a nonsense. Plymouth City Bus mention it on their website. There it is. Uh, one, no mention of first bus. I mean, this is just ridiculous, isn't it? This is a ticket that is so great, but oh, we're not going to tell you you can use it on any bus. Oh no. This is uh, there's a. <laughs> Yeah, try working it out. But actually, it's quite a good scheme in North Wales. The red lines are the trains and the white lines are principal bus routes. And you can get tickets in the different zones if you could work it all out. But you won't find a thing about it on the Arriva website. And they run the trains and the buses. Yeah, it's just a nonsense. Now, of course, there is a joker in the park pack of uh, integration. And that's the, what used to be called the Monopolies and Mergers Commission. And that's the CMO. They, for example, carried out an investigation recently last year into the award of the Northern franchise to Arriva because they run buses as well, strange to say. And they found there would be a substantial list of bus rate competition on those things. I mean, what planet are these CMA people on? You know that so now Arriva have faced some fair restrictions on, on just odd routes. I mean, completely bizarre. But the point about mentioning this to you in this context is to show. I accept it, there is challenges because Chris Birchall, great guy, used to run Southern, now he's in charge of all the trains that are either run. He had to give evidence to the CMA and he was quoted in the trade press in the report as saying this. Uh, you know, oh, sorry, that hasn't come out, has it? But basically, he's saying, I've, I've larged it too much. Um, but uh, they're two different market segments. Never will they meet. He had to justify the fact that they don't meet. Whereas actually the Department for Transport is saying the opposite. We should be more joined up. Anyway, you'll love this final bit before we go on, because I oh, crack you. We're gonna to, we all will be here till four. Um, this was in a trade press last autumn. And I'm, I'm heartened. I'm going, going down to Cornwall in a couple of weeks because I like what First Bus are doing. They, they, at last, they're investing in Cornwall. And uh, this bit here is what I want to draw your attention to. This is all good PR fluff, froth. Uh, th this is good. Look, the investment call demonstrates the strength of the relationship we have. The county, which is now very vocal about its aspiration and partnership, the work we are jointly doing with other operators and GWR, our sister train operator, sister train operator, in improving the product, integration measures, and so on. I mean, we can look forward to some wonderful things, can't we? Bus and train integration in Cornwall. Can we? As I say, I'm going down there in a couple of weeks. I booked an advanced purchase ticket with GWR last week. And you know what it's like when you buy an advanced purchase ticket with people like GWR, Virgin Trains East Coast? 
they've got your email address and they send you all these frothy emails. I'll show you some more examples lately. They think it's good marketing, it's not. This is the one I got from, uh, came, look, here we go, uh, the other day, 24th of February. Hi, Roger, before you set off, thank you for booking, thank you for book, thank you, oh, it's not gonna work. That's a pity, because I blew them up too big. I'll have to read it, because you can't see that at the back, can you? Thank you for booking your journey with us. Now you've got your tickets. We have some great ideas and offers to help you get more from your stay. Save time and money on transfers, activities, entertainment, and so on. Do you know what the first thing the offer is on? <laughs> Can you believe it? Not a mention of buses. And if you click on this here, it takes you through to the Europa Car website. And this isn't going to work, doing it. Oh, yes, it does. Wow, wonderful, Europa Car. They've got a partnership with GWR. You can get a car hire anywhere. You can get 30% off. This is a disgrace. The chief executive of First Group, how can this be justified? It's ridiculous. It's a nonsense, isn't it? Let's move on quickly then. Before I get too carried away. Slating chief executives. I need another job. Uh, now, as well as lifestyles changing, there's also a lot going on in the country in which we live, as we know. Um, in particular, what I might call regionalisation. You know, this doesn't mean anything. It's just a sort of clip art. To, to, if you click in Google image, give me a regionalisation image, that's what comes up. But what I'm talking about is linking towns and cities that previously perhaps didn't have common interests. You know, as we're getting bigger regional shopping centres now, we're travelling further. We're, we're getting more interested in regional <coughs> transport. And a lot of it, do you remember him? He invented this thing called the Northern Powerhouse, this sort of brand and they define it as all this sort of area up north. Now, interestingly, <laughs> this area up north is where there's a lot of demand for <coughs> interurban transport, and it's crowding out the trains. If you ever travel from Manchester to Leeds in the peak on a Pacer or whatever, or Leeds-Sheffield, a lot of these, they're just absolutely stacked out. But what's the bus or coach alternative? It's woefully lacking. <coughs> National Express run from Leeds to Manchester, Sheffield to Leeds, but they don't brand it correctly. It's seen as a national network, not seen as a sort of regional network. And a whole market is being missed out here, not just in Yorkshire and uh, Lancashire and, and the Mets in Manchester, Liverpool and, and up north, not, not just there, actually in a lot of areas of the country. I'm just going to scoot through a few good examples of where some enlightened bus companies are getting to grips with this huge growth in interurban travel. The guys between Le uh, Nottingham and uh, Derby, for example, fantastic service there and investment in, in, in linking those two cities. Uh, leads to Harrogate and Ripon by Transdev. Absolutely brilliant, the quality of those vehicles and the frequency of service now, and the generation of passengers. All credit to Stagecoach for this bold experiment of running from Bristol right down to Plymouth, uh, about oh, just over a year ago now. Fantastic investment in eight luxury coaches and an hourly service and through the night as well. I wish it well, but I think it may struggle because of the level of investment. But at least they're trying to tap into that interurban market. They don't always succeed, as this didn't. Um, uh, sorry, as that didn't with the uh, city of Oxford. Oxford bus, uh, uh, again, last summer, put on a new service from Oxford up to Birmingham. It didn't generate enough quickly enough, so they've knocked it off now. I love this brand, the City Sat brand, which Ray is at the back there putting his thumbs up. Ray Stelling from Best Impressions designed it with Alex uh, Hornby at Transdev. Because what this has done is really highlight, and I love this bit, York Fast, highlight the potential for really attracting people to use the bus as an alternative to the train for the heavily oversubscribed Leeds to York market. And it pretty much runs non-stop in the city. And the whole branding, the whole concept is brilliant. Another recent incursion into the interurban market was just the other month, last month. Stagecoach have tried this Sunderland to Newcastle service. Again, good for them for trying it. But you've got to have an impact if you try this. And that is not an impact. That's just a bog standard timetable. It's not gonna excite 
You've got to excite if you're doing this. Like that, the uh, Oxford Cambridge service, that, that, that looks good. And in Scotland, there are a whole myriad of these intra-urban routes now on the, on the east coast and down the west coast. I got this just last week from Air down to Glasgow on the ex-Oxford double decks. Fantastic ride. I'd have paid extra for it, to be honest. It was so impressive. And then in Wales, uh, all credit to the Welsh Assembly or the Welsh Government for, for plugging away with this Trawls Cymru network. I wish it well. I hope it can continue to succeed because it deserves to try and link that nation <coughs> to, together. But we're now drifting into some examples that I would call a lacklustre. I don't think they're making enough of the potential of the interurban market. Love your ex. Well, what's it all about? This links Hull and Leeds fast. It needs to be much more exciting, much more inviting, as does this. This is Newport to Cardiff fast. It, it doesn't, it's just a bog standard bus. And, and, and this is a, a, a re, Ray's done his best with the Arriva <coughs> corporate stranglehold, but this is part of the sort of Leeds Wakefield market, and it, it just needs more excitement. Then they said, what's all that about? Bath to Western Supermere, express yourself. That doesn't tell me anything about the exciting link from Western Supermere to, uh, to, to Bristol. Neither does this through the wonderful uh, Nottingham Forest, uh, the, 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 the Sherwood Forest. <coughs> it's, it's just not exciting enough. And, and look at this, this is the sort of, it's, it's a lackluster. So there's huge potential, my message is, to really zap eyes, as uh, Transdev have done, into urban travel. There is. There's a huge untapped market there. In London, of course, the distance from Hartford to Guildford is pretty much the same as Leeds to Manchester. But of course, those old Green Line interurban sort of type routes, although they were limited stock effectively, have been killed off by traffic congestion, better rail and underground services. But have they? Because in, south, in the southwest quadrant, this is an absolute success. In fact, I think double decks are going to have to come on this now, partly because you can get it for 150 all the way, partly because of the problem of uh, flat fare. But it can't just be that Croydon, Kingston, Heathrow is the only market for a, a, a pretty good, fast interurban inter service. I contend TfL need to look at far more of these sorts of applications to speed up some of the otherwise what it feels are very slow moving bus journeys around London. The fourth thing, now I could again, I, you know, I could talk forever about this because it is my passion that we should be doing much better at customer service. We should be renowned for what I call legendary customer service, whereas I put it to you, the bus and the train sector offer lamentable customer service with some exceptions some wonderful exceptions. Pretty much though, that represents 10%. The rest, 90%, is awful. And yet it doesn't take much to shine, to absolutely make yourselves known for looking after your customers, particularly when something goes wrong. And things will go wrong when you're running buses and trains. It happens, operational issues. It's how you deal with what goes wrong. Now, Example of good practice are these guys. South is really awful picture. Sorry, Southwest Airlines. I've never travelled on them. I've never been to America, but my friend Roger Davis, he travels to America all the time, and he always travels on Southwest Airlines, and he's always e emailing me about his experiences, and they're usually about how they've recovered from some disaster offered him a free drink and free alcohol or free this or they've kept him informed or he, he waxes lyrical about it so much so I'm so impressed with them I'm telling you about it and I don't even know them <laughs> that's what can happen if you give legendary customer service I've just come back from a week in Scotland last night I yesterday afternoon I flew back from Glasgow to Gatwick it was actually last night I flew back from Glasgow to Gatwick it should have been in the afternoon I, I, I could spend 10 minutes telling you about the lamentable story of how they handled it. But just suffice to say, after a three hour delay, we got on the plane and blow me, they still wanted to charge £2.30 for a cup of tea. 
what's all that about? It's just a nonsense, isn't it? And no, di and, and I tweeted them, and they tweeted a lovely tweet back when I finally, they, they said they tweeted it while I was in the air, so I only got it when I landed, because I've been having this tweet with them, and they tweeted back saying, uh, we, see, we see your plane has taken off now, and so you should be um, back at uh, Gatwick, you know, within, within a reasonable time, because they'd previously told me the plane has to be over three hours late to get delay repay. I asked them what was it, because I'm, I'm a professional delay repay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they said three hours. We arrived in Gatwick two hours, 50 minutes. <laughs> and of course, they said that was wonderful. They said, you, know, you must be thrilled. No, I was just banking on another 10 minutes late. Now, the problem with customer service is this. I would never run in Brighton and Hove. The last thing I would ever in the world consider outsourcing, that's the word, <coughs> buzzword these days, was customer service. I, I want to talk to my customers. I want to hear from them direct. And yet this is the, this is the trend now. Don't do it in-house, oh no. Uh, outsource it. Do you know, you know these things? They're all over the rail network. Every station has one. Oh, Jeff Marshall, who does the, what he's doing this wonderful project I mentioned, he does least used station e tube, um, YouTubes. And I went with him on one to Park Street on the Abbey Line uh, from Watford. And the train broke down. You can watch it on YouTube, put in least used stations Park Street, it's lovely. And um, we, we got a replacement bus in the end, we got to Park Street, we, he did his video. And one of these things was there, so I thought, well, I'll press it and see you know, what's happening. Is it, are they going to get the train back, or what, do we, shall we wait for another bus or whatever? So I pressed the blue button. I don't know if any of you have ever done this. <laughs> do you know what happens? You get through to someone in <laughs> <laughs> absolute nonsense. This is nonsense. They all got their, they all check their box. Got a passenger charter. Have you ever read GWR's passenger charter? The second paragraph says this. <laughs> they don't. They do not put their customers first in anything they do. Because I had a delay repay saga, which again I could talk about forever. But I basically had an hour, over an hour late on the Paddington journey to uh, the Exeter to Paddington journey in July. It got to October. I still hadn't heard. Still hadn't got anywhere. In the end, I got up to Mark Hopwood, the the, the, the MD. But I, I found out through all of this, all my phone calls and trying to sort it out. That who I was, well, that, that's who I was talking to. I was talking to, and they're in Warrington. They've got no passion for Great Western Railway. They couldn't care less, frankly. They're just ticking boxes, trying to do what they can do. And they told me the reason why there was a problem was because in July, GWR changed the outsourcing company and they had awarded it to Capita. So <coughs> where was it before? Some company in India. I mean, this is just a total nonsense. And then you get, this is in the name of customer service, you get these frothy emails now, as I mentioned earlier, when you book something. This is from Virgin Trains East Coast. I went on the 5th of February, it was a Sunday. It is all, we're excited to work, it is all a nonsense. They're not excited at all. This is some marketing person working for another company. But the thing is, that it goes on telling you, look at that, it's nothing like that on a Sunday, the food you get, this is first class. But the point is this, it tells you, yeah, if you need us and all this stuff, nowhere in this did it tell me the journey was gonna take an hour longer and we were gonna go via Cambridge because there was engineering work on it. The key piece of information, because yeah, you don't, we don't tell you that, we just wanna tell you frothy stuff. That's customer service as it is. I mean, I, I know this has changed, but this, I mean, I felt so, I, okay, I'm perhaps a man of means, I can afford it, but a family of four, that's two quid to go and, to go and visit the toilets. I know that's been done away with now at Victoria and Charing Cross. It was an outrage, and good old Peter Hendy, I think he probably sorted that. But this is the sort of way customers are treated in the bus and train industry. And my, I mean, I could go on about Hassocks, my local station. <laughs> <laughs> Yet again! <laughs> <laughs> what have we got? Oh, uh, yeah, plug for TfL. I, I actually, when I've had problems with my Oyster, uh, Victoria, often when you come up the escalators at the Victoria line, from the Victoria line at the peak hour in the evening, all the gates are open because they're just trying to get the flow through. So I put my Oyster on, I go through, and one time I looked on my thing, it ha hadn't recorded. So I was charged the maximum fare that day. I rang them up. 
And the guy just said, yeah, I'll, I'll refund it for you. I was so staggered. He actually works for TfL. He could deal with it there and then. A world away from um, GWR. These are great guys. Look, I love that slogan. If ever, you know, always get your shoes repaired and your keys cut at Simpsons. Because, I, I mean, again, it, it, there's a great history to this company and what the guy who owns it does with his staff. It's, it's a wonderful story. And these are my favorite. This is my favorite brand. I spent a lot of time out on the road. And I love Premier Inns. And I love Costas. Why? Because they're consistent. If I go to a Premier Inn, I know there's going to be this funny old purple thing at the bottom of the bed. I don't know what it's for. It always falls off in the middle of the night. There's going to be a menu there, a menu there. Everything's going to be standard. Why can't the bus industry do this? Why do we have notices all over the place? Scrappy this, scrappy that. They say, oh, well, we've got so many outlets. So's the Premier Inn. They probably pay their staff the minimum wage. There's, there's no difference. And similarly in Costa, you know, the barristers are on minimum wage. And yet I, I always get a, a feeling they want me as a customer. I don't get that from bus drivers generally. And do you know why? It's because there's not that leadership from the top. There's not that passion from the top that filters down in the company. So the whole culture of the company is about customer service. And it doesn't cost a penny to do it. And the companies should do it. Wouldn't it be nice if every bus and train company, somewhere on the bus or the train or the office or whatever or the station, had the equivalent sign? Why not? They're in the private sector as well. Let's move on. I'll, I'll skip through this because you, you, I know you will agree with me. This is so needed now because um, <laughs> you know, I'm just going to quickly skirt through a few examples of maps, time, <laughs> websites. How bad. Now look, try and find a bus map of Somerset, Lincolnshire, Dorset. Where, where are they? It's no surprise ridership's going down in those counties to me because you can't find out where, where it is and yet... These companies, it's, it's not as though maps are history. Okay, motorists have got sat navs now, but the OS are doing wonderful trade in encouraging people to buy maps. Same with timetables. Sometimes it's a nightmare to get hold of a bus timetable. People say it's all online. But do you know what the three of the five top selling magazines are, weekly magazines in this country, if you do them by sales? Here they are. Number one, number two, number five. It's all online. Why do we need these? Yet people will pay for these every week. Because they like to flick through, plan out a bit of travel, a bit of, sorry, I should say, a bit of television <laughs> viewing, radio viewing. But that's what I like to do. I want to tr think about my travels. I want to look at a map. I want to look at a few times. I can't do it all online. And, and that, is the, that is the excuse. Ah! I just want to say, because can you imagine, okay, it is all online, but can you imagine going into a top restaurant, really lovely restaurant, actually any <coughs> restaurant, any cafe these days, you go online, have a look at them, I'm a veggie, vegetarian, so I always just check out, is there going to be a veggie option, and um, see what it is, but when I go into the restaurant and sit at the table, hello sir, here's a table, yeah, table for you, and I say, what well, can I have the menu please? They don't say, no, it's all online. <laughs> but that's the equivalent. That's what our bus and train companies are largely doing now. But actually, there are exceptions. This is uh, Newcastle bus station. Wonderful display of timetables there. But, but down the road in Sheffield, they can't, they just don't do it. They're pulled out completely. Com pulled out completely of rain times. It's a bit out of focus. Because last time I took a photograph, in the bus station, I got hiked off with a man in a high vis saying, you're not allowed, it's a security issue. So look at this carefully. I'm gonna switch, switch away from it for security reasons. I sneak this photograph out. At least they're not in high vises. But there's the display of leaflets you can choose from. And actually, it looks a lot, but that's the same. That's the same, that's the same. There's hardly any leaflets there at all. But you've got one of these things. Oh, well, that's good, isn't it? I mean, again, I won't go into the detail, but they're useless. But can you imagine any private company that had the option of a point of sale, sales point, at a bus stop on the road? You know, leaving these sorts of things up when that happens all over the place in, in the country. And then, <laughs> if you've got a spare half hour, have a flick round the Arriva website and see how many of these you find. They clearly don't use their own website. 
Then there's this, of course. Well, yes, we're all travelling more because there's Wi-Fi. This is just, a, if I go in Costa, I take it as red there's Wi-Fi there. Take it as red. I don't have this sort of right in my face. But anyway, okay, it's good. But to get to it, I've got to tell them where I live. What's this all about? My house number, my road, and then uh, and then they all do they all do this. Stagecoach first and Arriva. Here's stagecoach. How many times a week do you use it? What difference does it make to you? You don't know who I am or anything about me. And then the classic has has it in name has has we free. Oh yes, I've come out my house. I've got on this vehicle because it's got Wi-Fi. I don't want to travel. What do they think the answer is? This is just marketing nonsense, isn't it? Total nonsense. And then there's Twitter. Now, if when I was young, if entering the industry, the one problem we had, because we have operational issues, is how to communicate with your customer. There is a problem here. If only there was a way that we could send a message to a little bit of equipment in their pocket to say, terribly sorry, this bus is delayed, but here's an alternative. If only. Well, wonderful. Those of you who don't follow Twitter, that's what it does. And yet, and yet, oh my goodness, some of the worst examples are out there. My friend Alex Hornby sent me this photograph. This is the first snow of the winter last November in, in Yorkshire, in West Yorkshire, where he runs. It was dodgy. People weren't sure what, whether the bus was going to come, what was going to happen. So Twitter comes into its own then. A reaver. Mm. A reaver. <laughs> they run lots of buses in West Yorkshire. They tweet from Luton. How bizarre is that? At least they don't outsource it to Capita. They tweet from Luton. So the guys come in at eight o'clock in Luton. They get ready to tweet. And it's all sort of frivolity. This is what they tweeted last November. <laughs> it, was, it was in the news. Do you remember Toblerone changed the gap between the five size chunks? I'm waiting for a bus in the snow and you're asking me what I think about Toblerone. Get this real. <laughs> this is what they, now they've, since Ray, my friend Ray, good friend Ray and I, we've been plugging away at this for months now to get Arriva to change this stupid attitude they have. Of, of, of signing off and signing in, and uh, they've stopped this now, I'm pleased to say. But this is a bit of history, just to amuse ourselves of what it used to be. That's the sort of thing they used to do. Look, it's 4.25 on a Friday afternoon. No wonder they got this reply. <laughs> Let's move on. Now, I referred earlier to young people aged 17 finding out how much uh, it, it costs, depending on what age. Any age, try finding out how much it costs to travel by bus on a website. It, it's just ridiculous how we hide prices. There are some notable exceptions, but generally speaking, it's so hard. And yet, we live in a society, in, in a lifestyle world, where price is what it's all about. Look at these guys, their whole, their whole business model is around price. These guys, it's all about price. Buy this because it's 10 quid. I used to tell the story years ago, I went into Tesco, there was a huge sign at the front under the veg and fruit bit that said, a picture of a broccoli plus a picture of a cauliflower equals sign one pound. I was so fantastically impressed with that, I went immediately and got a broccoli and a cauliflower for a pound. I don't like broccoli and cauliflower. <laughs> it's because it's the price. Now, there are some good examples. This, this is wonderful. All the bus companies, there they all are, in the southeast have cop together, and for £8.50, I think it is, you get a ticket that goes takes you all over the place. It's wonderful, so good, four marks for that. But go up in Hertfordshire and Essex instead, and in Hertfordshire, you've got a thing called Explorer, and basically it says within Hertfordshire, and it's messed off again, and then it says any journey starting in Hertfordshire and finishing over the boundary. And then there's a similar ticket in, say, in Essex, but that's within Essex, and then it doesn't say, but any journey that sort of starts in Essex. Why is this restriction? If I want to go from Chelmsford to Stevenage, say, why should I have to buy two tickets? I might as well have the one ticket. 
You can do that with Interlink. With Interlink? Yeah. Not if you have to break your journey. No. It, it, the, the Hertfordshire, the Essex ticket, no, yeah. you cannot use it in Hertfordshire unless your journey starts in, Hart, in Essex. If you buy the Interlink ticket for, for £9 in Chelmsford, you can go all the way to Oxford. Well, I've learned something now. That's yeah, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, thank you. Yeah, I'll add that. That's why I want your feedback. Because, because my, my plan is that every bus and train, every bus company, we should have a £10 day ticket. Go anywhere. Well, so why not? Well, I agree. There are some bus companies that day ticket is above £10, but maybe they should pay a supplement, okay, if you want to do the... I mean, it is a huge area in East Scotland, so you have to pay maybe a supplement for that. But let's, let's get, and, and while we're at it, let's make all the plus buses three quid. So we know where we are. It's easy, straightforward. That's what Poundland would do, or the likes of that. But we don't. We sort of hide it all. Let's move on. Now, this is going to be quite a quickie, but, you know, design is changing fast. Absolutely fast now. And the leaders in this field are le leaving behind those that aren't watching what's happening. And here... There's a good example of where train companies could learn a lot from what bus companies, the enlightened bus companies, are doing. Martin, Martin Griffiths, the uh, uh, chief executive of Reading Buses, is here this evening. He's doing a fantastic job with race standing of, of absolutely revolutionising how it feels to travel by bus in Reading. This, this, this is just a bog standard bus for Reading now, but it's brilliant the way you, you, the way you travel on. You really feel as though it is sort of almost luxury to travel on, on this vehicle. <coughs> and it's happening in a lot of areas now. This is the latest vehicles on the, uh, with Blue Star between Winchester and Southampton. You feel good in these vehicles. Trains, have you ever been, have you been on one of these? I mean, this is just absolutely <laughs> disgraceful. These, vi these vi trains are gonna be around for 40 years probably. Can you imagine in 2057 what it's going to be like? It, it's awful now. No seat backs. Look at the leg room there. And wait a minute, what's, what's this thing here? You, you have to put one foot on this and one foot there. It's so uncomfortable. And the seat, they're, they're like ironing balls. There's no giving them at all. It, it's just awful, awful. And I love this. Oh, I love, I love that. It's not... It is not the way I travel today. And I will try and avoid those trains now. Certainly, can you imagine going from Brighton all the way to Peterborough? The money we've spent on Thameslink 2000, as it used to be called, and now we're penny pinching on the vehicles. It, it is an absolute disgrace. Yeah, that's the way we travel, standing. That's what it's going to be. But it doesn't have to be like that. You know, GWR is pretty good, actually. Right, we're in the home straight now, we're nearly there. Um, we'll can canter through these. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm a great sucker for this. There is so much beautiful countryside in this country. Scotland, Wales, England, Northern Ireland. Beautiful, beautiful. And you know, truly, the best way of seeing it is from a bus, coach and train window. You just don't see it from a car. You don't, because the hedgerows. Yet, do, do we market this? Have you ever heard that statement I've just made anywhere? Yes, there are some enlightened companies as well. I saw this in Newcastle last week about cycling, but it is true of the bus and train industry as well. Don't, that's okay, there is people who want to just use it as a means to get somewhere, but there is also a huge market in tapping into getting on this train or bus because of the lovely views. Uh, did you see on BBC4 last uh, August bank holiday, these guys? This is a charity, well-meaning community folk who get together and run this bank holiday and Sunday bus from uh, North East. It starts way up in Darlington, goes all the way through the Yorkshire Dales. And it was a wonderful <laughs> advert for the scenery on this bus. I went on it the next Sunday and it was a lovely atmosphere on board. The scandal is... This thing is probably not going to run this year unless people give on a Just Giving charitable page to fund it. I reckon a commercial company worth its salt could make money out of this, do away with the concessions on it, you can say it's a tourist route, and charge decent money and promote it properly. 
There are some good examples. The old needles breeze, the best bus stop in the world to have waited for a bus there. Don't don't lean back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what Ray's done with the old lakes, this is wonderful. This makes me want to travel. Look at that, look at that. This makes me and those people want to travel on that bus because of the views. It's just wonderful. These are what uh, blue, uh, more bus have done in the new forest. Alex, uh, this was a bog standard route from Hebden Bridge up to um, Keithley. Rebranded, it, it makes you want, I really want to get on that bus. It's all about Bronte country. What Ray's done on the Carlisle Newcastle route, to, with, with, with the spec that he was given by Stagecoach and, uh, and Arriva to try and up it and make it feel good. And it, <coughs> I'm sorry it was in a sort of dank day up there last month. But then when you've got the bus stops, Arriva haven't done anything. There's no branding carried through to make it exciting. Here's some other lacklustre examples of scenic bus routes. These buses were run by stagecoach around the Isle of Arran. I was bowled over by the scenery. Well, you wouldn't know it from the bus. It just tells me it's a better bus. This is the Sherpa network in Snowdonia. <laughs> it was absolutely wonderful. Well, you wouldn't know that from the bus. <laughs> this is a sort of vanilla branding <laughs> for the route from Fuelli down up to Carmarthen. Beautiful route. This goes to Paul Perrow, wonderful route. Uh, that goes along the coast from Liscard uh, to Plymouth, wonderful. That's the Axe Valley service, beautiful. Where, where, how do you know about these things? Ray's done his best again with the Arriva Corporate Stranglehold to promote this route, which is another wonderful route. But this is the pièce de résistance. These photographs are taken from the web and they're of the Scottish West Highlands. I've just come back from there. I love it. This is uh, Loch Lomond, Glencoe, uh, Ben Nevis, the coast. That's the promotion for it. <laughs> that is the best coach ride anywhere. You get on in Glasgow, you go all the way to Skye. You wouldn't know it from the timetable. <laughs> That's just the corporate <laughs> advertising by CityLink. They don't mention the view at all. Crazy. I was on this route last week, the 60, goes up the Ayrshire coast. Wonderful route from Stranraer all the way up to Ayr. Come on, let's clean the windows, guys. <laughs> That's what I got on the bus for, to see the view. And then what are these things? I had to look at those for two and a half hours instead of enjoying the lovely view. That's what Ray's recently done with another route, 60. It makes you want to travel on it. That's what it used to look like, naff. That's what it looks like now. So there's lots that we can do with buses, but come on, let's not lock the windows. This is a, this happens all over. This, this is on the platinum branded routes, the top routes in the West Midlands. It's just a nonsense, isn't it? And then we get the old contravision. You know, we've got a lovely view over the Humber Bridge here. Now they have stopped doing this now, but when I went, it was like that. Let's take up the trains for a minute. This is the view of Dawlish Beach, the lovely Dawlish Beach. I booked a ticket all the way down. That was my reserved window seat. I wrote to them saying, you've got to be head up under the train's description bag. That's not a window seat. And then that's the forward view. And you can just manage to crick your neck and see a little bit out of it. And that's a first class view on a cross country train with complimentary sandwich and crisps. I mean, it's just crazy, isn't it, this? And that, that's another problem I find on cross country, if I upgrade to first class, some Burke who wants to go on his laptop all the time, doesn't want to see the gorgeous views through Dawlish, he pulls the blind right down. However, last week I was doing all the lovely scenic lines in Scotland on ScotRail, and um, I, they, they're doing it right there. The seats actually go up with the windows, and they're gonna put HSTs on, all good for ScotRail, well done. And these are the view, I mean, lovely views up there. And they do at least try and promote the sort of lovely scenic lines. But actually, that is all they do. It's not much, is it? Just a leaflet. You pick up the timetable and you're back to the bog standard stuff. Annoyingly, as you can see here as well, when you unfold them, you can never fold them back. <laughs> Just a small bit of noise. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that, that's the promotion for going on the Oban and Fort William line. Come on, it's the most wonderful scenic line in the country. Look. Yeah, yeah. Right, we're nearly there, Browry, don't worry. Nearly there. Um, now then, I used to love driving. I did when I was young. I hate it now. I get stressed out. 
I really don't want to drive. Now, I'm not alone. There are some people, famous people, who've never driven. There's some, there's some, Kate Beckinsale, Barbara Streisand, pronounced Streisand, um, Dave, Sir David, Ricky, M M Bill Gates, Robbie, they, they don't drive. They've never had a license. But you kind of feel as though you're a bit nerdy if you travel by bus and train all the time, don't you? So, oh, you poor thing, if you have to come by bus. <laughs> That's the sort of thing I used to get when I ran a bus company. I used to turn up. So they come, you come by car? No, I came by bus. Oh, you come by bus. <laughs> There's a growing number of people who just don't want to know about driving. But of course, we let the car industry get away with too much. That's the image, isn't it? Come on. That's what you see in the old trade, in the Sunday supplements and whatever. The open road. No. <laughs> That's what it's like. That is the reality of driving today. <coughs> Congestion is the bugbear of the bus industry, but it is also hitting motorists. And we need to promote this more. We need to say what it's like. If I drive and I know it's going to be a crowded car park, it's a nightmare trying to find a space, isn't it? Because d d you've got someone behind you, so do you ease up? and wait for someone to come out of space and risk the wrath of the person behind? Or do you, do you go faster and risk, might miss a space? It's a nightmare. We, we never sort of talk about this in the bus industry. We should. We should say, you know, it, it's, a, it's a nightmare using your car these days. And if it isn't car park problems, where are you going to park on the street? Because yellow lines are everywhere. Oh, sorry. What's on there? I missed out a thing. Oh, did I, did I click? Oh, I've lost. Oh, I've lost my punchline. There was, there was a funny old yellow line. No, it's coming up, you know, sorry, Lost the, gone off script. A bit of an Oscar ceremony moment. <laughs> <laughs> what we should be doing is promoting travelling by bus as a positive thing. Now, Ray and I did this campaign about ten years ago now. It was a wonderful success. In the end, we had a hundred buses with people, real people, positively saying why they're travelling by bus. I'm proud to be on the bus. Imagine. If every double deck in the country had one of these, why not? Why are we advertising soap powder, cinemas, all these other things on buses when we need to promote bus travel itself? It's easy to do. And my final point about don't like driving, in the old days, uh, London Transport used to run all these lovely routes on a Sunday, out to places like High Beach and all these places, because people didn't have cars in those days. Well, wait a minute, in London, I thought you didn't need a car anymore. Car ownership has gone down or not going up so much. So why aren't we doing all this again? Why aren't we promoting the idea? You don't want to drive to Epping Forest for a nice day out or, or uh, lots of other opportunities. Let's get back into thinking positively. Leave the car at home and let's run a whole network of interesting routes. Finally, we got there. Now, those are all been hopefully positive things that we can be doing. And I've sort of started to get into, yeah, they're carrots. But there is a stick as well. And we need to use the stick, as I've sort of demonstrated a little bit in that last uh, clip, about using the car and the impact of the car. This is, a, I know, will be familiar to you guys. Wonderful poster that, that came out. You know, we, we need to be, as I mentioned in the last uh, segment, talking up the problems of parking, the cost of parking. I'm a great fan of high parking charges. Brian the Hope City Council, really helpful in, in the partnership that we had there. Because there's a direct relation. If you have dirt cheap parking, free parking, it's going to be a tough, toughy to get people on the bus. But if you park price up, it's a, it's a very effective congestion charge, parking, really, effectively. You don't need to worry. You just Bang, bang on the bus. That was my. <laughs> and these, we need to talk up these sorts of things more. And the fact that we need more bus lanes and more proper enforcement of bus lanes. And the fact if you dare go in one, you will be, you will be fine. Now my final point is this, and it's a serious one because it worries me about where the bus industry is going. The big groups who control, setting aside Go Ahead. The big groups that control a large segment of the market here, there is a tendency now for them to pull things away from local level and deal with things at a corporate group level. And that is a huge risk and danger for losing touch with what's going on locally. This is a local market run buses and you need properly resourced, astute, articulate, 
well remunerated, motivated, empowered, enlightened, impassioned, where's my thesaurus, uh, managers at local level who can make a difference. But we're going the wrong way. We're having all these group marketing people who are sending out these naff emails. We're having all this sort of corporate speak coming on, as you saw earlier, the, the examples of Great Western Railway and First Bus, totally out of touch with what needs to happen at, at, at ground floor level. And it worries me that we're moving right and we should be going left towards more local empowerment. And a good, re a good example of a company that lost its way but reinvented it, has reinvented itself and after making sustained losses for two or three years, posted the first profit it has made uh, for some time because it reinvented itself after two or three changes of ownership by giving its managers within a corporate structure autonomy locally to vary things as they thought. The example I would give is a company called Waterstones. If you go in a Waterstones bookshop now in different parts of the country, you will find local elements in there. They embrace the local community. They encourage people to come into the shop from the community. They have local interest books. This is the way that bus groups should be behaving with their managers and not taking a grip absolutely uh, centrally. Thank you for listening. Sorry I've overrun a bit, but I hope that was of interest. Undoubtedly it was. I'm tempted to ask for a great shout of hallelujah. <laughs> um, actually, I'm just picking up on that last slide, Roger, you may or may not have heard this morning on the Today programme there was a discussion about Waterstones no, who, who are branding some of their local bookshops as a local bookshop and not Waterstones. And there was a debate about whether this was a good thing or whether it was How interesting. Mm. It was actually quite an interesting discussion, yeah. very relevant to what you say. Right, you were asked for your contributions, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. A hand goes up right at the back straight away and then I'll come forward. Nick. Right, thanks, Barry. Um, picking up firstly on your Sheffield example, I just had two days, one night, based in Sheffield, and one of the things that and we use public transport exclusively, but the opening experience was dire by finding the very shot you showed of the inquiry office with retail opportunity in the window, and then being directed by the other place where you were marched off into Perda, um, where the guy said, oh, you need to go to Arundel Gate. Yes, Arundel Gate. And it was like a walk through train spotting five or whatever <laughs> it was awful yeah. and when we got there there was nothing much of merit except a north sheffield and a south sheffield bus map which uh, to be fair was useful yeah the following day having already uh, incurred a red card we went into derbyshire where we had the opposite experience of high quality easy to obtain publicity about the transport network and operators like Flint, as I think they once were, maybe still, who were excellent in the way they presented and ran the services. And that leads back into the industry, I think, which my recommendation would be, look at history, at the way people like myself came into the industry, and the way we were encouraged and motivated to be passionate, as you described, way back, by using the services engaging eyes and brain every time you went out and then coming back and doing something about it and i just don't see that across the uk industry now I, i'm so pleased you've made those comments so it isn't just me i absolutely agree with everything you've said and thank you for in, endorsing my, my observations i've I've, met, I've done that walk as well from the bus station in, sorry the transport interchange to um, Arundel Gate and, uh, and it's dire and then when you get to Arundel Gate there might be a few leaflets there and as you say at least there is now a north and south bus map but you sort of go to the counter as a, as a visitor and you say can I have some bus times and they sort of say well which one you know, I don't know I, I just want to travel around and enjoy myself on your buses it's as though I'm an alien customer to them and this is a nonsense and you're quite right about managers getting out and about and seeing this why isn't the md of thirst in sheffield and stagecoach in sheffield 
doing this and doing something about it. You're, you're quite right, I agree. Absolutely. Isn't there a partnership there, Roger? It, there is, absolutely. The Sheffield Bus Quality Partnership. Yes, exactly, Andrew. My what God, there's a lot of crazy. It okay, just ticks the box. I'll give you the mic because then everyone will Can I make two comments? Please. Um, Sheffield, until recently, the South Yorkshire PTE were excellent with published time. They were. For every route. Yep. They withdrew from that. Yes. The bus companies haven't caught that. You're quite right. <clears throat> uh, my local first group uh, subsidiary charges full fares from the age of 11 unless you are a resident of the local authority area where you can get a card issued by the local authority <coughs> which gives you uh, half tra travel up until the age of 18. That, I mean, to me, what are they doing? I mean, I mean this is a, I live in a tourist area. Yes. I'll give yes. you a copy of one of the timetable leaflets if you like. Are you going to tell, tell us which area it is so we can all... I can tell you it's York. York, yeah. 11, I mean, this is just ridiculous. Absolutely, they're nonsense. You know, a family of four, that's with teenagers, 12 and 14, they're going to have to pay four adult fares. It's, <laughs> it's cheaper to get a taxi. Mm. Yes, absolutely. Okay, anybody else? I'll do this, I'll do John first because I can reach him with the mic. But. Thanks. Um, thank you, first of all, uh, for fascinating and uh, <laughs> very amusing, although it is worrying, uh, presentation. Uh, if I can pick up on a reaver. Uh, yes, the Explorer ticket, the Interlink Explorer, is valid on all buses in Hertfordshire, apart from TfL contract services, and a lot of the operators uh, put it for the whole of their network. So for a reaver, I can go across to Harlow on a 724 and down to Chelmsford. I can go the other way to Aylesbury and down to uh, Oxford on the 280. I can go out to Milton Keynes and even use it on the stagecoach from Hitchin out to, um, to Bedford. And I think Carousel taken on there network so you can get to Reading as well um, <coughs> but um, Ariba I'm afraid had lost the plot uh, they, um, <laughs> Boxing Day Watford Town were playing at home <coughs> also the first day of the sales what did Ariba run? Yeah. Bugger all <laughs> <laughs> but they did run a 3-2-1 on New Year's Day when none of the shops were open and no <laughs> uh, as far as their marketing is concerned um, like you, I go around and try and find out about uh, what's happening in different areas. I'm often down in Chelmsford. I know the ladies in the bus office there quite well. And I've come to an arrangement that every time I go down to Chelmsford, I try and raid the racks in Harlow for 59 times, <laughs> which connects to them, and take them down to me. Yes. And then for the girl in Harlow, I bring some 100 yes. back, which is Lakeside yes. Chelmsford. Yes. And if they phone up a reader, they never get the time table. Yes. I, 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 I mean, what a way to run the public. Yeah, this is just a nonsense, isn't it? And, and this is a private <coughs> sector industry yeah. now that we're talking about. You know, it's just bizarre. You can't imagine, you know, the likes of, I don't know, uh, uh, JD Sports, Tesco, Amazon, as I said, John Lewis, relying on customers to sort of take something from there and run over and put it there. But I, mean, I agree with you. But your point about, as I say, I'm genuinely interested in this interlink thing because my information was from the website and I will go back now and, and see what it says on the website because I was given the impression you, you, unless your journey started and finished in the relevant county you couldn't in, interchange them. Indeed Martin, Ray and I were in Harlow uh, last year and we had a bit of confusion with the driver as to whether we could use our Essex based ticket I think it was going into Hertfordshire and the driver was, was unsure as well. Not much sure when you can go to Essex, but I yeah. think you could go up to, uh, go on the road Colchester run across yeah. Stansted. But the other daft thing is they've got their own Arriva only I know. ticket at the moment, £7.60, yes. instead of £8 going down £9 for the interlink one. You could use it on the 724, he throws the hard. I don't think you can now. You've got to get on a, th on a 300 or a 321. I don't. To buy the ticket to use on the, on the green line. You are. I was under the impression you couldn't even use it on the 724 now. So you see, there we are. It's all confusion, isn't it? And yet these are, should be the, the go-to get tickets to buy. Richard, you'll have to shout because I can't get the mic out. Uh, I'm sorry if this is turning into a not-for-bus industry uh, <laughs> session. Um, but I went recently, um, and there's a very good company generally, I think, called uh, Wilts and Dorset. I mean, well, uh, they had a poster on their bus for a service 
they run from Salisbury to so Stonehenge, uh, which a lot of people would like to do as a pleasure trip. Yes. There were two one pieces of information I needed. One was <coughs> what time does this service run and how much does it cost? Yes. But did the poster tell me that? No. 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 And another instance uh, on the particular journey I was taking, uh, an inspector got on a uh, service from, um, uh, <coughs> where, where am I talking about? Winchester to um, Alton. Yes. Uh, and um, found some young people at the back who had, had tickets, but they had not the right value tickets, apparently, mm. because yes. they had some student cards yes. which had been issued by Blue Star. Yes. And he said to them, a long, great long length, a very officious man, which is another issue, um, oh, we used to have an agreement with Blue Star that this was valid on our services, yes. but it's not anymore. We <laughs> yes. can't use this anymore. Yes. And I thought, well, for heaven's sake, what <coughs> sort of business is this? Yes. And then to cap it all, he went down and spoke to the driver and asked to see his driving license. And he said, I'm sorry, I've left it at home in my wallet. So he said, I'm sorry, you can't drive the bus anymore. Come out, I'll drive it. <laughs> he was nothing like as good a driver as a proper driver. Yes. And he drove extremely slowly, and I was getting very worried that I'd miss my connection yes. in all yes. which is an advertised yes. connection. Yes. And the driver had to tell him, turn left at the next turn. <laughs> 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 sort of sounds, sounds a total bizarre... Sound, sure it wasn't a nightmare dream you had. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds <laughs> like it is one of those Michael things. Michael. Yes, but in a way that, that comes back to my, my number four. You know, this is lamentable customer service, and yet exactly. it doesn't cost anything to put that right. There's <clears> no money involved. You just... Just get it right, and, and you're quite right. I, I mean, I didn't mention in this sort of thing about uh, customer service, how we treat customers, but the, the rail industry, because this is about trying to be both buses and trains, you know, they're lamentable about this idea you mentioned about tickets, and that wasn't a valid ticket. You know the, the old system where you buy an advanced purchase ticket, you're restricted on that journey. Mm. If you miss that journey, that's it, you're, you're finished. But why? Why don't we just pay the extra, the supplement that's needed for the next journey? That's what any private sector business would do that was interested in customers and wanting to grow the market. But we, we come, oh, we can't do that. There's rules and regulations, restrictions here. So you're, you're dead right with your examples. Awful. This is like group therapy. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it would be. We're all friends. Anybody, anybody else want to share? <laughs> um, it's all to go in the book. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, we can probably just about, if you're very quick and very brief, we'll just take a few points. I saw Martin's hand, so I'll take Martin and then the gentleman in front of him. Yeah, I totally agree with your comments about uh, information on websites. It may all be there, but sometimes it's quite hard to find. And there's a lot of out of date information on the website. Um, my main comment about plus bus, I agree with your philosophy, there is a difficulty, um, some of the dialogue between the sort of booking clerk and the customer just doesn't happen, I think because the customer doesn't really know where they want to go, or if they do know exactly where they want to go, the booking clerk doesn't. You've got to be a very, very knowledgeable emirac to be able to guide somebody <coughs> along these sort of, I don't know, 50 or 100 plus bus schemes. Should we just take the yeah, comments? Please do. Let them get it off their chest. You can wind it up at the end. Right, gentleman in front of Martin, quickly. I'd like to throw in about the um, customer service. Uh, one man buses. Uh, I do travel locally, I live in Chelmsford, and nine out of ten of the drivers on the bus do not smile at you or say a word. You say good morning, good afternoon, thanks for the ride. They do not reply. And I think they could be, they need to be trained in customer. Mm. Mm. Right, okay, right at the very back and then the gentleman in front on the side also. Yep. Two very quick questions. Uh, being in Rotary Jump, first of all, I've once been inspired by one of Mate Automatic. Um, and I think it was one of the answers to previous questions, uh, earlier questions. Do you think that could be your two million pound a year um, MD at Sydney Sausage? <laughs> okay, Roger's, Roger's, Roger's scribbling away. Richard, yes. Yeah, thanks. Um, 
Roger, I think I'm like you, I'm probably the same age and the same problem, but I don't yet qualify for my pass. I tried to get out and about, and, and the experience was just so inconsistent. If I'm not, when I did last year, so I've got like a year before, uh, a week when I travelled from my home in South End to Edinburgh by bus, and the amazement on people's faces when you say you stood on the late service, and they how did you get here? Well, I came from South End by bus. you're the only manager who comes and rides on the bus here. <laughs> and that's a sad indictment of where we are as an industry. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know how we change it. It's, it seems to be ingrained in the culture. Right, the line of the clock, I'm going to draw the line there. Roger will be outside afterwards, so he's bend his ear. Um, as we as we have a glass of wine or whatever. So a quick round up, Roger, on those comments. Yeah, that, that, I mean, that, those are wonderful comments and feedback, and th thanks very much. I mean, in reverse order, in a way, what you've said I think reinforces the, the idea that w working with Ray, we are determined to try and do something about this. You know, we, we are impassioned passengers and we, want, we don't want all these horror stories. We want it to be positive. And so we are, based on your comments, your feedback, I've taken this presentation around a, a number of groups now, getting some observations, and then we're going to try and hit the industry with this. So we're at least going to try and do something. And, and, and you are right. That, uh, that there is inconsistency around, and, and is none of these things, as they say, are rocket science. It, it's easy to get them right, so let, let's really tr try, try and do that. So th thanks for that sort of in, in endorsement, and I don't think managers use the bus enough. I, I really don't think they do, and I think that is part, part of the problem. Um, I, I think that uh, there's no reason why the bus and rail cards couldn't be given free. I think it's one step at a time, though, with the sort of conservatism of the of, of, of the bus and rail sectors and worrying about losing the 30 quids or the 70 quids over three years. But it, but as I mentioned in the in the senior one, why not give it free instead of the concessionary fares as, as a longer term uh, a, a, a thing to, to make that more, more sustainable? Um, the, the one man operation or one person operation and you don't get a smile, you don't get a welcome, you don't get a thank you. There are some exceptions. But what, why can't we learn from the airline <laughs> industry? I mean, I mentioned Southwest Airlines and some BA stuff earlier, but every, I don't use the planes much. But I do know that when I do get on the plane, I will be greeted. That there will be someone there who you know, smiles and welcomes you on, on, on the aeroplane. Well, well, why can't we do that in the buses and buses as well then? They can do it in the airline industry. And similarly, as I gave the examples of Premier Inn and Costa, I often think that, you know, th those staff, they make me feel good about being in their hotel or their coffee shop just by their aura and, and the way they do it. And, and so there is no reason why we can't do that with, with bus drivers. And I would like to think that we should really crack, crack that problem. And I, I accept with, with rail bus, the person in the ticket office, assuming there is still a ticket office <laughs> and open. Um, uh, there are lots of plus buses, but in today's world of technology, there is no reason why if I go into the Hassocks ticket office and I say, you know, Cambridge, and he puts up Cambridge, he's got the ticket options, something can't flash at him that says, ask about plus bus. The, the, you know, technology is all around it. I can, I can have it on my iPhone now to tell me. So there's no reason why we can't really do that. You could say, look, it's only one, one pound forty-five or whatever it is. You know, salesmanship. That's what we need. Salesmanship. This is a private industry now, but we're just woefully inadequate at selling it. Excellent. Right. I'm going to do a very quick wrap up. Um, we're going to adjourn outside for those who want to for. Um, a glass of something and some nibbles. Uh, please join us. Give generously in the um, sources provided to cover the cost of that. Um, but our thanks to Roger. I mean, seldom, I think, have we heard A, such passion, but B, such common sense. That's the point of it all, isn't it? Um, and delivered in an entertaining way, but a message, various messages that are really quite serious and we all ought to take away 
and, uh, and think about. It's summed up for me in a way by the fact that I don't think I've ever heard this audience shout out on more than one occasion, hear, hear. <laughs> uh, so, uh, hear, hear, thanks to Roger for yeah. an excellent presentation. Thank you. Thank you.